This is the newest Outback Wilderness from Subaru. Today we're out at our Peninsula Off-Road Park to see just how well it can handle mud and rocks. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Recently, we tested the new Subaru Forester Wilderness here at our Peninsula Off-Road Park. And even in pouring rain, with super slick conditions, it passed with flying colors. Weather conditions aside, it's still going to be fun to see how well the Forester Wilderness's bigger brother, the Outback Wilderness, handles all our courses. Even though we're coming up on 2023, the vehicle Subaru sent us is a 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. No matter, the 2023 is basically the same. This comes standard with a 2.4 liter turbo boxer engine, good for 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. A continuously variable transmission is standard, as is Subaru's active torque split all-wheel drive. EPA rates economy at 22 miles to the gallon around town and 26 on the highway. Price of the 2022 model, as you see it here, including power sunroof, reverse auto braking, and navigation, $39,965 US dollars, including destination and delivery. Let's take a moment to take a look at these tires. Now, they are Geolander All Terrains from Yokohama. They are a 225-65 R17 fitment, and they are wrapped around these really nice looking and fairly scratchable uh, black lacquered aluminum wheels. The Alpac Wilderness is special because it not only has dual mode X mode, it actually has a third program that kicks in at speeds over 25 miles per hour. I don't think we'll need that today, but you never know. Today we're filming at our private off-road park and we have a number of different courses that'll test the capabilities of this Subaru Outback Wilderness. And we're going to start with the easy course. Uh, this one we call Chicken Run because it's really like right next to the chicken coop and there's almost always chickens on it. <laughs> so uh, we're going to watch out for chickens. They are a hazard, uh, but more important, we're going to look how power gets shifted around this system uh, and really see what the difference is between normal and X mode, as well as some of the other features of this vehicle for off-road adventures. Slowly ease in. Now what this course does is it really takes traction off cross wheels so that you can see wheels try to struggle for grip here. Now this vehicle is open differentials front and the back, so that means that the wheels are just going to spin when they have no traction. And then the power is going to basically leach out of the wheel that has no grip. With X mode, it then uses individual wheel braking to push power to the wheels with grip. So we continue over the little log. Now this is, of course, as I said, designed for more basic crossovers. Uh, so it's just not going to be much of a challenge here, but we should see some of these systems actually function. And so far, I'm not in X mode yet. Haven't needed it. Okay, I got some wheel spin here. Yeah, this is exactly where X mode is needed. So here we're spinning. We don't have X mode on. I turn on snow dirt, which is type 1 X mode, which limits the amount of spin. I add a little throttle, and you're going to see the wheel brakes kick in and push us forward. Now the important thing with X mode is just keep your foot in the throttle. Uh, it's going to need a moment to figure out what it needs to do in terms of shifting power around. Now there is X mode type two, and that actually is for uh, more extreme conditions like deeper snow, deep mud, when you need more wheel spin. Uh, so basically you always wanna try X mode type one before jumping over to X mode type two. And yeah, I could just rage through here, but the point is to show you how the system works before we get to something really tricky. There's a pretty deep hole. Now this is gonna be easy for this vehicle because of course it has 9.5 inches of ground clearance and X mode is a very effective system as we've seen in numerous tests. Okay, now let's try something a little bit harder. The double ditches takes chicken run and kicks it up a notch. Uh, the ditches are much, much deeper, and that will really absolutely raise that back wheel. You could possibly encounter a situation like this on a trail where there's a washout, uh, but you're not going to really run into something like this all that often. 
Uh, now the road surface here is a little wet um, because it has been raining constantly up until about yesterday morning. So we have about a day of drying here, but it's, it's not really that dry. It's still pretty slick. So we'll see how this does. I am expecting some tire slippage here. So on the left, we first have a rather small ditch, uh, but still pretty good lean. We have a good couple inches of um, gap right there, which means we, we have a little extra travel over a standard Outback, but not enough to really reach down and grab it. Something like a 4Runner or even a Chevy Colorado would have a wheel planted firmly on the ground right here. Because this wheel is up in the air, that means no traction, like literally zero traction. Hey, I'd like to see some stats. They actually do have uh, some data bits here, which I want to see. Car info. So we can see I'm currently at a 14 degree, degree uh, angle sideways. Now we're going to apply, uh, we're in X mode snow dirt. We're going to apply a little throttle. We're going to see that power shift around the system. And then as we move into the next even bigger ditch, things are going to get real wild. Okay, so this is super tricky because the ground is slimy. Let me take a look, make sure I'm not scratching a wheel here. Nothing so far, looking good. Clean line. Want to make sure my clearances were all good. No reason to scratch this all up. I'm going to shift a little bit to the left. And the reason is simply I don't want to grind the uh, tire against the outside wall of this ditch. A little bit more left. Okay, we should be good here. Turn back on my front camera. You can see it right there. Kind of see where the ditch is. There's the highest point. So at this point, I'm just going to put the throttle in. It's going to use that wheel braking to get me up and over. And then we should seesaw right about there. <laughs> now, I would like to have a front camera and data at the same time, but clearly I cannot do that. Uh, so I'm currently at a six degree negative slant forward and a 10 degree on an angle, but it feels more dramatic because I'm pushing this way. Let's see what we got on the outside. Oh, that's pretty high. Clearly that wheel's in the air. We got about a foot between the ground and there. Okay, so we're looking good on clearances here. Nose is down. Now I can see we've kind of landed on the mud down here. Um, and this is where I would really like to have a big beefy skid plate. However, this is designed to be fairly soft mud. Uh, and I know that once this wheel starts tracking forward, the front of the vehicle is going to lift. So we're not actually going to dig down any deeper as it is. So I think we'll be fine. Get back in. So this will clearly be a challenge for the vehicle now to lift itself out of the ditch. Uh, there's going to be a little scraping on the underside. Unfortunately, we don't have the extra skid plate on this. It just comes with the basic one, uh, which means there's a lot of plastic under there. So we might get a little grinding on the plastic. Let's just move forward real slowly. We luckily have gravity on our side. And then we power out. And then we power out. And then we power out. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Nicely done. Our next test is to see how well this does on a rocky logging road. Now this road was designed to emulate the logging roads here in the Pacific Northwest. They use 4 by 8 rock, and usually, because we're in a mountainous region, you have to go up a hill. So uh, we've designed the hill to be pretty steep. I'll call off the numbers as I go so you can see just how steep it is. Now you might notice here, as I'm rolling, it's catching itself because once you're in X mode, you are automatically uh, engaging the hill descent control system. I can, of course, override that with a throttle, or I can just turn X mode off if I want to free roll. So we're going to go to left here and kick off this next test. Now, if you watch the review where we took the Subaru Forester Wilderness on the same course, you might note that it was pouring rain at the time. And we jumped immediately to the hill climb with the cross stitches on it. And uh, that was actually harder than <laughs> this course. So we're gonna go ahead and go up the logging road first, and then we're gonna tackle the muddy climb and see how well that does, because it still looks pretty moist. Uh, now this one has some complicated elements. It's a lot of undulation left and right. The rocks are helpful. They actually uh, 
provide additional grip, but they're also big, so they get tossed around a little bit. Now, over time, really old roads, the rocks get kind of seeded into the road. These ones are still fairly fresh. Oh, let's make sure we turn on X mode so we have that power uh, distribution going on. So the active torque distribution system that we have here is uh, basically a 60-40 split, but it uses a clutch plate in the middle to vary that torque pretty dramatically front to back. Then of course uses wheel braking in various degrees to shift the power left and right. It's a very um, useful system. And some people complain that you need a locker. What this basically does is provide the functionality of a locker, uh, but without the cost and hardware necessary to make it happen. So basically everybody gets a locker. Now, is this as good as a locker? Absolutely not. Uh, can you add a locker to this vehicle? Actually, there is an aftermarket option. We have a whole video on that uh, where we took our Forerunner versus somebody that took one of these and equipped it with a rear locker. So I'm just creeping up. Oh, let me turn my camera on so we can see what's going on here. Uh, first off, I'm at a nine degree angle, which is about as steep as you'll find in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I have a tree about a foot away from the back of the vehicle over there. Uh, and we're about to climb over a rock. I can't really see it in the front camera because the nose of the vehicle is too far forward. Oh, and that turns off the view. Yeah, the rock's right there. It's that little pile of mush. Uh, let me roll forward a little bit and kind of, I want to check the clearances. This is still a fairly new course for us and we haven't run everything through it. Now, granted, the Forster Wilderness did get through here, but it has a different wheelbase. Even with slightly less ground clearance than the 9.5 inches on this vehicle, Different wheelbases give you, you know, improved breakover approach angles and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to take a quick look and try not to bang the tree. Okay. Yeah, we got plenty of room there. That's nice. Okay. I think we'll be fine. Got about that far behind the tree over here. Okay. Now we're going to see how well this thing can climb as we uh, lift the vehicle up and over the boulder on the left. That's still bright. Here we go. Throttle in gently. So X mode not only controls the braking and traction and power around the system, it also makes the throttle a little bit uh, slower. So they get a really nice slow tip in. Wow, we are like two inches from that tree over there. That's a little uncomfortable. See, that's the problem with this vehicle being longer is it's hitting different spots of the course. And I'm gonna keep my foot on the brake and then feather the throttle in so that I can basically do a much more gradual forward movement. So if the vehicle starts to shunt forward, my left foot's already on the brake. So slowly ease forward. So you thought we were out of the hard stuff already? Nope, not even close. We have a big old ditch on our left, which is going to completely remove traction. Come on. Come on. Snow Dirt's having a hard time getting traction here. Okay, what are we, uh... oh, it's that rock in the back. I'm trying to clear the rock on the back now. This is actually where I'm gonna adjust my line slightly, if I can. Yeah, I got a tree back there, but I think we're okay. Okay, so let's go right a little bit more. and then into the ditch and up and out like a rock star as we slowly try to climb out of this last obstacle and not hit the camera. Yes. Cool. Now we have one more test. This is the uh, muddy climb. Now this is very steep. We're looking at about 17 degrees, which is a little bit more than a 30% grade. That's pretty extreme. Now, I'm not gonna say these don't exist in the real world, but I have run into them a couple times uh, when traveling out in the mountains. So, unusual, yes. Difficult, yes. Slippery because of the mud today, most likely. So this is either gonna be fun or terrifying. I really don't know. Now, the you cannot compare directly um, how we're gonna do today with this vehicle versus the Forester Wilderness simply because the conditions are not identical and conditions mean everything when you're dealing with dirt. 
swing it around. Okay, so I am going to do a little bit of setup here. There's not much to do, uh, but I am going to set the vehicle into deep snow and mud. Now this has two different programs under 25 miles per hour and over 25 miles per hour. Whereas snow dirt will just shut down once you actually start spinning the tires over 25. Uh, this one will keep it active and actually switch into a second program um, when it goes over 25. So we got a few things to deal with here. Not only is it slanted, it's also slippery, and there are cross stitches which will remove traction off of one or more wheels at a time, meaning the vehicle really needs to push as much power as possible uh, to possibly one wheel in the back. Now we'll know for sure exactly where the wheels fall on these ditches because all wheel bases kind of act different on this climb, uh, but I'm looking forward to see what we got here. Just gonna give it a try. Now, like I said before, I don't have underbody protection here, so I have to be really careful. I don't want to slam the nose of the vehicle into something. Also, I scratched the heck out of the tires last time doing this on the Forster Wilderness, and I don't want to do that again. Okay, so that got super slippery. Uh, so let me just say what the difference is between snow dirt and then the deep snow mud. In addition to having two available programs in deep snow and mud on this specific trim of vehicle, deep snow mud also allows for more wheel spin to help kick out the dirt and expose the lugs so it can kind of grab at the terrain. Now this is a really, really modest all-terrain tire. In fact, I would call it more of a trail terrain tire, uh, something like a Falcon Wild Peak AT3W, um, obviously a BFG KO2, um, those would be much more aggressive all terrains. And when you're dealing with mud, you actually should get like a mud terrain tire. Um, I think the BFG is a KM2, KM3, something like that. Anyway, uh, a mud terrain has super chonky lugs, but you don't want to drive around town in those because they're loud, they kill your economy, uh, and they're kind of annoying. So this is a nice compromise tire for somebody who's really not going to deal with stuff like this all too often. Let's give it another shot. And boom, boom, are we gonna do it? Are we gonna do it? Whoop, whoop. No, we're trying to slide. Okay, yep, we're stuck in the slide. So we're just gonna back down slowly now again. We're gonna see if we can get this on a third try. So I'm just kind of feeling my speed out. I don't wanna overshoot. I also don't wanna slam the nose into a very hard surface and bend the frame or damage the, the nose, right? So let's do this again to the left. Up we go, and over. Subaru Outback for the win. I mean, yeah, that 260 horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder does make a difference. I think also compared to the Subaru uh, Forster Wilderness that we tested earlier, uh, not just the fact that this has more power, but also it has a slightly longer wheelbase. And I think that that was advantageous on this specific climb. Now in the real world, you don't know where your ditches are gonna fall with your wheels, uh, but I think this did a very good job. Of course, this also has hill descent control. We're just gonna flip the vehicle around here and go down the same hill, because we know it's slippery. And this is actually where you can really start to damage things. So I need to make sure that I straddle that ditch and I don't nose in because with all the weight on the front of the vehicle, uh, we could cause some serious problems there. So I'm gonna do view. And I think that's, oh boy, that camera just really, really sucks. Can hardly see a thing, huh? Well, I'm gonna put on snow dirt that'll automatically activate the hill descent control system. And the thing I want you to look for on the outside is actually one of the things that I don't like about uh, the hill descent control system in Subarus and many other vehicles. And that is the fact that it takes about one rotation of the tire before it catches and starts the slow descent. I would like it to basically start crawling immediately and that's one of the big benefits of using a system like crawl control in the Toyota 4Runner is that it instantly engages the moment you start moving. It doesn't have to catch itself. Uh, the Subaru, uh, Kia, especially on downhill descent, it catches itself. It's just kind of an annoying aspect of many of these systems. So I'm in drive. Uh, the way Subaru adjusts its speed is the speed of the approach. So I'm just gonna crawl forward at like less than one mile per hour. And then once we're on the tilt, I'm gonna call it out and I'm going to remove my foot off of the brake and let the vehicle ease me down. 
So right here, I'm already teetering, so I'm just gonna take my foot off the brake altogether. It's rolling a little bit, and then it catches. See, it takes a moment to engage. Now, the nice thing is that this will keep you at about three miles per hour. I always prefer hill descent systems to be closer to like one mile per hour, preferably, and also so that you, you know, in a way that you can adjust the speed manually. Uh, but this still kind of works okay. I mean, a lot of people don't use the hill descent systems anyway. I don't find them to be necessary. But if you're going to do it, do it with a crawl control system like in the Forerunner. That just works so much better. So if you're going to run into terrain like this, be it potted out trail roads, uh, logging roads with complicated sections, or even a mud climb, clearly the Subaru Outback Wilderness will be fine. I think for somebody who's looking for a vehicle that is fun to drive on this pavement, has loads of room for both family of four plus their gear, uh, and has modern amenities. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the touchscreen, but it does provide the amenities that most people are looking for. Uh, if you can deal with slightly slow touchscreen response, uh, <laughs> this vehicle does have a lot to offer. Also, I really like the cabin. I think the design is very cool, and these seats are some of the most comfortable that I've ever driven in. And yes, I have driven in the entirety of the West Coast in one of these Outbacks. So, for Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them.